Well, hello everyone, it's the MI Gardener with another very exciting episode for you all. Today we're gonna to be getting our hands dirty in another growing guide. This time we're gonna be talking about onions. So let's get started, kick your feet back, hopefully you'll enjoy and learn something new. So before we get started into this growing guide, I wanna mention that this is not going to be regarding starting seeds. If you want me to start seeds, uh, that's not gonna happen in this episode because it's a growing guide. So I'm already assuming you have something growing or ready to plant. So if you're looking at me starting seeds, click over there, there's a link or in the description box below, there's a link to where I start seeds for onions, and that'll get you a little bit more familiar with starting seeds, and then you can come back to this episode once you have something growing. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the golden rule, and what is the golden rule? Well, the golden rule is a long day or short day onion, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but basically, if you don't follow that rule, you can do everything right, from pH to watering to spacing um, to nutrients, and you're not going to end up with an onion because of the fact that it is so onion specific and so crucial to follow. With that said, let's talk about more or less what a long day and a short day onion is because that's the most important thing when growing onions. So if you go on Google or have an atlas that has a latitude line, you wanna look up a latitude map of some sort and then find where you live. If you are north or above the 37 degree latitude line, you're gonna to wanna to go with a long day onion. And that's simply because onions are light specific. When they have a longer day period, they need to be long day onions because of the fact that they get that sun. Because based on the photo period of basically, photo period meaning the amount of sunlight they get, that's going to dictate their bulbing cycle. So again, if you plant a short day onion in a long day onion climate, you're going to have beautiful tops, but no bulb. And the same goes for Southern climates. If you are below or south of the 37 degree latitude line, you're gonna to wanna to plant a uh, short day onion because of the fact that if you plant a long day onion, it's going to do the same thing. You're gonna have beautiful tops, but absolutely no bulb. Um, so with that out of the way, just make sure you know what uh, type of bulb you're getting when you go to get uh, seed or starts or sets doesn't matter they should be telling you if it's a long day or short day onion and if not you can typically look up um, what varieties are long day and short day and then you can simply search uh, name specific and it should apply so the next thing we're going to talk about is the types of onions you can get there are live plants being ones that you get from the greenhouse or the ones you start from the seed and then there is also the uh, the semi-dormant plants that you get from a seed supplier. These do look bad, but they're actually supposed to look like that. Well, I mean, they're not always supposed to, but that's how they always come. They, they are not going to hurt at all uh, if you plant them like this. They're meant to because the onion growers grow them and then basically wash off the soil. And since they don't have any soil or water on them, they start to die back but onions are very, very resilient. So one thing you're, gonna, you're going to need to know first is that you don't need to baby these things. They want to grow. If you set one right in the soil, right on the surface of the soil, you're gonna notice the roots go straight down and the greens go straight up and it's going to grow even without being buried. Um, so that's no worry at all. It wants to grow for you. So when you get these, don't return them. They're supposed to look like that. And the third is onion sets. And I don't have onion sets because I don't recommend growing with them. Now you can grow with them, but the reason why I don't recommend it is because onions are biannual. And biannual means that they flower their second year. And what an onion set is essentially a one year old onion that an onion grower grew and pulled out of the ground and then threw into storage to go into dormancy. And then they pull it out the next year and sell it to you. So if you can do the math one year with the grower and then you grow it the second year, usually more often than not it flowers. And flowering isn't a bad thing. Um, it just limits the amount of storage time you can have on an onion. And since I like to have an unlimited amount of storage almost, I mean, it still obviously will rot. But if you look at the storage time from an onion that has gone to seed versus one that was grown that year, you're looking at about a 50% longer period of storage. So um, if it's not a concern to you, you can go with onion sets. But um, the, the risk of rotting, happens a lot as well because it creates a green stalk in the center of the onion. So normally when you cut an onion open, you see all white or all red rings depending on the variety that you've planted. But when a scape forms, that is the flower stalk, 
when it goes to seed, you're gonna notice that there's a green center when you cut the onion open. That green center never goes dormant and it can rot and then it rots the inside of the onion out, resulting obviously in less storage time. So with that out of the way, make sure you know what you wanna plant and obviously you can plant whatever one you want, but there are your three options. And I'm gonna be planting today live onions and semi-dormant live plants. So let's get started with that. And then obviously we're going to talk about transplanting into um, its original, into its final uh, living quarters here. So you can plant them in raised beds, they do great there, but also I like to plant them in buckets because these are my competition onions. So I'm hoping these babies are gonna get nice and big. All right, so here are your plants. They come like this. And a lot of people would say, oh no, that's too crowded. Don't worry about it. Like I said, onions have very thick wiry roots so they can be separated without a problem. Simply shake them out of there you get it's pretty root bound um but just simply break them open and separate them out and what you're going to notice is they're going to come right out just simply pull there's your onion that's ready to go then you can do it again simply pull and since the, the since the roots are pretty wiry they're not very fibrous they're going to pull out beautifully simply take your cup here this is just uh some vermiculite perlite worm castings and compost for a very loose mix. Onions like that loose mix because they have a very fast growing root system. Simply push it in there. And you're gonna notice that this plant is kind of sad looking. It's got a crimp here. Simply take it and cut it off. Cut off these lower leaves here and make sure you have about a hands, uh, a hands length from the soil line to the top of the onion. That just ensures that it's going to um, reroute energy back into the roots to um, reduce the plant transplant shock and it's also going to stabilize the onion so it's not falling over because one thing you don't want is to for the plant to be top heavy and fall over at the base because if it crimps at the base it tells the onion that it's ready to be harvested and so you want an always an up you always want an upward growing pattern never anything hanging down if something crimps over simply just cut it off and it's going to be fine so now we're going to plant something from a semi-dormant plant and the same applies we have our same potting soil that we used for the live plant. And you're simply gonna take your, your semi-dormant plant out. As you can see, it's semi-dormant because it is going into dormancy, but, until we, but once we get up some water, it's going to do just fine. So as you can see, hardly any roots here. Definitely um, looks pretty sad. We're just gonna dick, stick our finger in there, stick the transplant right in there, press it down just a little bit, but not too hard. And you can take scissors and cut those off as well. Uh, any tops that there are, and it will reroute energy back into the roots to form a nice root system. And then it's going to push greens out in a little bit. And this will come back just as healthy as a live plant. You'll never know the difference. I promise. So now let's get into what happens when, when these are actually ready to be transplanted into their final uh, planting place. So we have a pot here. This is a pretty large pot. It's a three gallon pot. And the reason being is I won't plant any more than one onion. This is what is going to hold this one onion in here. And the reason is, is because you want enough space for your onions. If you're planting in raised beds, you wanna give them about seven to eight inches in between each other if you want them to get to their largest size. Another thing you wanna make sure is that the pH of the soil is a little bit on the acidic side. You want your soil to be about a 5.5, no more than a 6.5 on the pH because of the fact that when you cut open an onion and you get that that very potent smell, that is actually sulfur, and sulfur is acidic. So the, um, the enemy of sulfur is lime. So don't add any lime to your soil because that's gonna raise the pH, and it's not gonna be good, so just don't do that. Um, but yeah, so just make sure you have some uh, good pH soil that is around 5.5 to 6.5, and that's gonna give you a good window. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is nutrients. What I have here is just some leaf compost and worm castings, but I've also tossed in a 10-10-10 all-purpose fertilizer. The reason being is because you wanna focus on all aspects of growth, but you really wanna focus on nitrogen. People always say to add phosphorus because the plant itself is a root vegetable, but that's wrong. Because of the fact that uh, each ring of an onion is a leaf, you wanna focus on leaves because that, it, that basically means the more leaves you have, the, the more rings you have equaling a larger onion. And leaves is dealing with nitrogen. So you wanna focus on nitrogen more than phosphorus. So that's a nice little tip for you all. And so you want the soil to be nice and loose. Like I said, in, in transplanting the, uh, the little baby transplants here, same goes for a large plant. They have a very large root system and they like to burrow nice and deep. So I don't like to transplant my plants any more 
than what they already are transplanted. See, as you can see, some, some soil is falling right off there from the top. And that was just basically support when I was transplanting them. I don't want to plant any more than what they already are planted because of the fact that soil pushing in on the bulb obviously will push in and prevent it from expanding outward. So I keep to, uh, I keep to a pretty loose potting mix and I don't press it down too much. And I also don't fill more soil than I needed, than, than is needed on, uh, on top of the bulb here, on the neck of the, of the onion. And this is called the neck here. So um, now what we're gonna do is just water it in and hopefully we're going to have a beautiful onion plant. One quick tip for you all is when I have my onions growing in their final growing place, I'll actually place one of these little dinky cages. A lot of people use them for tomatoes, but I find that that's pointless to use because they're too small. And other people use them for peppers, but what I use them for is onions. When they grow their greens up nice and tall, they tend to get top heavy after a while. And having these rings here will add support so they don't flop all the way over, leading to the plant thinking it needs to be harvested. So I tend to have these up here so that I can have a beautiful, nice, sturdy plant. Because again, like we said, the more upright the plant is, the healthier it's going to be. All right, that's just about it to growing onions. Like I said, they're very simple if you know a couple of rules and uh, the basics. So I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you learned something new. And if you did, let us know in the comments box below. We love to know what you learned. And also you can let us know on our other social media pages as well. The same goes for questions. If you have any questions about this episode or other episodes, let us know in the comments box below or on our other social media pages and we'll get right back with you on that. And um, yeah, so that's just about it here on the Emma Gardner channel. As always, this is the Emma Gardner reminding you to grow big or go home and we'll talk to you all later. See ya, bye.